So what you cab jet here from Thailand Myland. As you can see it's another beautiful morning here in Wahin. I've got a bit of news for you. I've just published my latest book, The 8 Best Retirement Locations in Thailand. Now there's many fantastic areas of Thailand that are great for expats or retirees to live, but these are the eight places that most people choose when looking for a new home in retirement. There's no one size fits all when choosing a new country to live in because it'll all depend on what you're looking for in your retirement and the lifestyle that suits your needs. The eight areas are in no particular order Chiang Mai, Koh Samui, Bangkok, Phuket, Hua Hin, Krabi, Chiang Rai and Pattaya. Chiang Mai is situated in the upper northern areas of Thailand. The name Chiang Mai translates to New City, yet the city is over 700 years old and was founded as the capital of the Lana Kingdom in the end of the 13th century, when the town quickly became a major trading post between southern China and Burma. This prominence made Chiang Mai a target of attacks by neighbouring armies and the city finally fell to invaders from Burma in 1558. In 1774, the King of Siam, King Taksin, drove out the Burmese and Chiang Mai retained a degree of independence from Bangkok until the late 19th century. Finally, in 1932, Chiang Mai area officially became a province of Siam and in 1949 the country changed its name from Siam to Thailand. There's so many temples in Chiang Mai and the surrounding area that it's said that if you visited one every day it would take you about 10 months to see them all. Chiang Mai lies 700 kilometers north of Bangkok and is surrounded by mountains where you'll find the colorful hill tribes including the Hmong, Lahu, Akka, Palong, Mien, Lisu and Lawa and of course the famous Karen or the Long Neck tribe as they're more commonly known. Chiang Mai with an estimated 30,000 expats living there is reported to be the third largest expat community in Thailand after Bangkok and Pattaya with many of them being retirees. There is a downside to living in Chiang Mai and for that matter Chiang Rai, its northern sister city as well. Every year between January and March the area is infamously known for its burn off season. This is the time of year when the air quality in the area is one of the worst in the world. The time of year when local farmers burn off their fields from the previous year's crops to prepare their land for the following year's crops and to rid the fields of bio wastes. So if you suffer from respiratory diseases such as asthma, emphysemia and bronchitis, you should avoid the area during that time. If you love to play golf, the Chiang Mai area is home to 14 outstanding golf courses, all with stunning scenery and there's many festivals every year in Chiang Mai with the two main ones being Thai New Year or Songkran, which is a water festival in April and Loikotong in November. Chiang Rai is about a three hour drive from its sister city Chiang Mai. If you're on a tight budget and need to make your income or pension stretch further, you can't go past Chiang Rai. The city is located about 200 kilometers northeast of Chiang Mai, close to both the Lao and Myanmar borders. It's a beautiful though somewhat remote city and it's surrounded by mountains, rice fields and stunning waterfalls. It won't suit everyone, you need to be happy in a more rural setting to live here. The people are the same friendly faces you see in Chiang Mai and it's one of the cheapest places to live in Thailand. And Chiang Rai has an international airport and a bus service to Chiang Mai every hour. The journey takes about three to three and a half hours depending on the schedule. If you like going to the beach, well Chiang Rai might not be the place for you because the nearest beach is 15 hours drive away. But if golf is more your thing, there's five golf courses in the Chiang Rai area. Bangkok is a city of over 10 million people with a fair few of them being expats and retirees. It's a city of contrast that manages to blend the old with the new, which makes the city exciting and eclectic. As in any capital city in the world, Bangkok offers many attractions and entertainment venues, as well as many shopping centres, markets and sporting events. 
The city has a rich cultural heritage with countless museums and galleries, temples and many festivals. The Grand Palace sits in the heart of Bangkok along the banks of the Chow Phraya River and is the residence of King Maha Varijikorn. Uh, the palace has been a, the official residence of Kings of Siam, later to be called Thailand since 1782. There are more markets in Bangkok than anywhere else in Thailand and perhaps anywhere else in Southeast Asia. Transport and infrastructure in Bangkok are as good as any city in the world and the MRT and underground is fantastic with routes to all the major areas of Bangkok. With their two airports, Don Mawong and Savani Bumi, travelling to other countries or anywhere within Thailand is convenient and easy. The nightlife in Bangkok is well known throughout the world such as the Lady Bar scene in areas like Nana Plaza and Soy Cowboy but they also have a more sophisticated nightlife scene throughout the city. If you've never lived in a large city before, I'd recommend that you come and spend at least a few months here to see how you adapt before making any big decisions. Of course, you think there's more than 40 golf courses scattered around the Bangkok and the surrounding areas. Wahin is in central Thailand, which makes it very convenient to get around the rest of the country. And Bangkok is only a two and a half hour drive north of Wahin. Or you can take the train which will take you about three and a half hours. But that's going to change soon because they've got a new high speed line opening up uh, in the near future. The line will eventually stretch all the way from Bangkok through Wahin and right the way down to the Malaysian border. Wahin is famous for its beautiful temples and this one's no exception. This sits right on the beach, a 10 minute drive from the centre of Wahin in Kaltakia. This temple is also known as Monkey Mountain and you can see the reason why but be very careful if you ever go anywhere like this to any temples with lots of monkeys they're not pets they look cute but they're very vicious and you can end up uh, getting bitten or scratched by them Wahin is also famous for its night markets and food stalls. This one here is uh, the Wahin night market, it sits right in the middle of town and here you come and pick your fresh seafood, they wait and cook it to order and then serve it to you in the restaurants at a very very good price. And it's not just Thai food you can get in these sort of places. You can get Western food and your barbecue chicken and all sorts of different uh, delicacies from around the world. On the outskirts of town, on the way to Kautakiab, there's two great markets, Cicada Market and Tamarind Market. And these markets are great to go to for cheap food, cheap drink and a cheap night out. But my favourite place in Wahin is Ban Kum Po, which is uh, right in the centre of town as well, just close to the railway line. And a great place to come to hear some traditional Thai music and some great cheap food. If you like to play golf, there's 10 golf courses in or around the Wahin area. Krabi is about a 10 hour drive south of Bangkok and fairly close to Koh Samui and Phuket. Krabi is fast becoming a favourite place for expats to retire. With its relaxed laid back feel, Krabi brings to mind how Phuket was when I first came to Thailand all of those years ago in 1983. Krabi is often recognised as one of the safest places to live in the country. Located on the west coast with a low crime rate and palm fringe beaches, Krabi is an ideal destination and well worth a look before deciding where to live or retire in Thailand. 
The Krabi area is naturally blessed with tropical beaches and with a backdrop of many limestone cliffs, Krabi is a photographer's dream. Most expats live in the beach areas of Krabi, with the most popular being Aonang, which is about a 30 minute drive south of Krabi town. Krabi is also the focal point for ferries to many of the beautiful islands in Thailand. Ferries depart regularly to Fifi Island, Kualanta and Phuket from Klong Jilad Pier. Krabi is also a melting pot for different cultures and religions. There's a large Muslim presence and also a smaller Indian presence here, which makes it a great place to be for finding different foods from different countries. There's two golf courses in Krabi, the 18-hole Pakasai Country Club, located 40 kilometers south of Krabi Town, and there's also a nine-hole course in Klong Muang at the Sofitel Resort, which is also open to non-residents of the hotel. If you're planning on flying to other places in Thailand or you want to go home to see your family, Krabi has a domestic and an international airport. Koh Samui is about a 10 hour drive from Bangkok to Donsak Pier in Surat Thani and then about a two and a half hour ferry ride across the Gulf of Thailand. The island of Koh Samui is one of my favourites, if not my very favourite place to live in Thailand. Since 2017 when I first came to live in Thailand, I spent probably 50% of my time on the island and the beauty of the island has never ceased to amaze me. It's always calling me back. Koh Samui has a permanent population of over 70,000 people, though that does rise depending on the number of tourists arriving by air or ferries every day. In early 2020, when Covid arrived in the country, it devastated the Thai economy. This impacted tourist areas such as Koh Samui and it ruined the island's thriving tourist industry for three years. I was there a few weeks ago and I'm glad to see that it's bounced back to its former glory with lots of tourists once again returning to the island. Koh Samui is known as the Coconut Island due to the millions of tons of coconuts that were once shipped from the island every year. This was long before the tourist boom in the early 1980s and coconuts have been largely forgotten on the island now and tourists are the main industry. When it comes to the ultimate beach lifestyle in Thailand, you can't go past Koh Samui, which is part of the Surat Thani province. Koh Samui has golden beaches, fantastic weather most of the year, and clear blue seas. It's not all about the beach though. Look further afield and you'll find crystal clear waterfalls, Buddhist temples, verdant forests. It's an ideal destination for retirees on any budget. The island's just over an hour's flight from the Thai capital of Bangkok, and about two hours by ferry from Donsak Pier, south of Surat Thani town. If playing golf is high on your agenda for your retirement, there's two golf courses on Koh Samui. Phuket is about a 12 hour drive south of Bangkok and like uh, Krabi it sits on the Andaman Sea. Phuket was the first place I ever visited in Thailand so it holds special memories for me. I came here in 1983, 41 years ago, on a ship that I was working on as a chef. Phuket is an island, but you can drive across because it's a causeway with a bridge across. There are ferries that uh, take you from Krabi to uh, Phuket, so you can get here by, by vessel, but most people drive here which means that the town is quite often congested with more cars than what you would normally find in an island like Koh Samui. Phuket is the third busiest area in Thailand for tourism after Bangkok and Chiang Mai. And the main reason for that is that it has its own international airport with direct flights from many Western countries. Many people come to Phuket because of its beautiful beaches and because it's a nice island to come and spend some time on. But it's also famous for sex tourism and the famous area of Bangla Road, right in the middle of the Tong.
also you may want to put Phuket on your list of places you might want to retire but it is a very very busy island due to the fact that you can drive onto the island and also it's a long way from other places in Thailand that you might want to visit apart from Koh Samui, Koh Phangan and Krabi. If you like a round of golf there's 10 golf courses on Phuket Island. Pattaya is just a two and a half hour drive southeast from Bangkok. The town was just a small fishing village until the Vietnam War. It was then used by US troops on R&R &R from their US bases and it's never looked back since. The beaches are now lined with resort hotels and high rise condos. Pattaya Beach is the most popular area for tourists and it's where you'll find most of Pattaya's infamous nightlife. Walking Street is the main place to party, but don't be put off by the reputation Pattaya has for the sex industry. It's only there if you want to visit, it's not compulsory. There's some magnificent areas away from the crazy area of Walking Street and its surrounds, and Pattaya is perfect for retirees looking for an outdoor lifestyle with plenty of different activities to keep them busy, including golf, beaches, sailing, Thai cooking schools, dance lessons, water parks. There are over 20 golf courses in Pattaya as well. Pattaya also has its own international and domestic airport, Utapio. So there you have it, my personal eight best places to retire or live in Thailand. Of course, there's many more fantastic towns and islands in this wonderful country, but that's one of the best things about retirement. You now have the time to do what you want to do. So make a list and take your time to check out all of the places in Thailand that tick most of the boxes for your own personal lifestyle and circumstances. So what are you waiting for? Go to the 8 best retirement locations in Thailand link in this video's description, buy the book and start planning on which location in Thailand will suit your lifestyle in this fantastic country. The book is full of essential information including cost of living and weather charts for each area, the good and the bad things about living in each area, what's there to do in your new town in the daytime and what's there to do in your new town when the sun goes down. Hospitals and medical facilities for each town and much much more. Wherever you choose to live in this exciting country, one thing is for certain your pension or your income will stretch much further here than it will in your own country. You'll find housing and utilities so much cheaper than in most western countries. Going to the local supermarket, you find everything much cheaper unless you do buy imported western foods or wine which are taxed heavily here for some reason and are quite expensive. Hospitals are not free for expats in Thailand like they are under the National Health Scheme in the UK and places like Australia but the public hospitals are inexpensive compared to most western countries that charge for medical services. If you like to travel and stay in hotels you'll find that transport costs and hotels are much cheaper than back in your home country and you can also eat very cheaply at restaurants and markets and food outlets for a fraction of the price that you would pay in Europe, the UK, the USA or Australia. It's also important for you to keep busy in retirement and have a hobby. This will keep your mind active and promote good health. I started this YouTube channel and I also reinvented myself as an author when I came to Thailand which not only keeps me fit and active, I also regularly travel throughout Thailand doing research, which is a fantastic way to enjoy your retirement. I think that if I hadn't found the hobbies that I did, I would have ended up in bars and pubs like I see a lot of expats doing here, rather than enjoying the outdoor life that Thailand has to offer. So, if like I was before I moved to Thailand, you're sick of your own country that's getting more and more woke by the day, and where your rights are being slowly taken away from you by your so-called government, where the country that you were born and grew up in is deteriorating so much that you don't even recognise it as your own anymore, maybe it's time to consider retiring or living overseas. If that's the case, take a look at my new book, 
the Retiring Thailand Handbook 2023. It's filled with everything that you need to know about living in the land of smiles. Or, if Thailand doesn't rock your boat, take a look at my book, The 10 Best Countries to Retire on Your Pension. Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Bali, Spain, Portugal, Costa Rica, Belize, and Panama. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.